Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it today. You know, today I wanted to talk about a headline that I saw that uh, may have some positive effects on the VA healthcare system. I wanted to read through this article and, and uh, kind of give my two cents. So if you're like most veterans, you're receiving some care from the VA and uh, this might have a positive impact for us, hopefully. So with that, please hit the thumbs up for me, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff because it helps to generate more uh, awareness for all of us uh, veteran community. So let's dive into it. The headline here says, healthcare simulation leads to smarter hospitals and better care. All right, so this uh, came out March 21st and let's go ahead and kind of read through it and see what they're talking about here. So here's where it starts. The simulation learning evaluation assessment and research network, SimLearn, continues to guide VAs healthcare on the path toward becoming a high reliability system. Healthcare simulation not only directly improves the care veterans receive, but it also profoundly enhances VA's healthcare facilities. How, however, that's weird. How, however, do simulationists plan, design, and execute these innovative simulations? Participants at the inaugural Sim Design Collaborative Conference found this out firsthand. So let's see what they found out. A variety of healthcare simulation approaches and technologies. The Sim Design Collaborative Conference was hosted at the National Simulation Validation Evaluation and Testing SimVet Center, NSC. Whew, this is rough in Orlando, Florida. Uh, by SimLearn's assessment, collaboration, and outreach portfolio, ACO, it brought together VA employees from a diverse range of backgrounds to learn about how simulation efforts can impact veteran care and VA employee training. The theme for the event was bridging the gap. As keynote speakers, simulation experts, and panelists all discussed how simulation can ensure quality care for veterans. I'll tell you what, I need to brush up on reading. All right, anyway, moving on. Uh, this is, it's not too much longer. Uh, it says here, day one, the first day of the event focused on an aspect of simulation that may not come immediately to mind, building planning. With a key note from the doctor or from Dr. Michael Brennan, executive director for the Office of Construction and Facilities Management, participants got to see how VA uses innovative technologies to help design future facilities that are built with both the veteran and caregivers in mind. That's kind of nice. Through physical simulations, the creation of the digital twins of rooms in virtual reality and collaboration with VA's facility management teams, VA can ensure that pre-planning through simulation delivers healthcare facilities that can accommodate the vast array of circumstances a caregiver may find themselves in. So that's that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, it's, it's much better to figure it out and make corrections along the way than build it, then realize it, and then go, we don't have the funds to fix it. So at least they're able to knock out a lot of, um, you know, potential issues uh, in the virtual reality world, which is still mind boggling how amazing uh, all of that stuff is, is becoming. So moving on here, it says efforts like these can also improve older facilities, which may not be designed with modern healthcare technologies, but can adapt to host such technologies. Day two and three, the second day of the event looked at the implementation of simulation at VA facilities. Simulation experts from ACO presented on how participants could design, implement, and execute their own simulations at their own respective facilities. They also shared the impact that simulations has from uh, more safely laid out patient care rooms to catching smaller errors such as broken directional signage or misleading elevator lights. Um, let's see what else. The third day was dedicated to increasing use of escape rooms in training facility staff. VA in, it, 
in at the forefront of this new successful style of healthcare simulation training, and it gave participants a chance to discover exactly how it works. Hands on with healthcare simulation. Sim design was not uh, just a chance to learn from, from a distance, but uh, let me start that over. So sim design was not just a chance to learn from distance, but to go hands-on with the tools and techniques that ACO developed and supports for VA. Participants were able to go through an actual simulation training in the NCS simulation rooms. They had a chance to put on yeah, virtual reality goggles, man. All right, so they were wearing virtual uh, reality goggles. Design healthcare in a design healthcare uh, setting virtually and experience multiple escape room training. Uh, guided by ACO staff, attendees were immersed in the kind of simulation work that is impacting veteran care throughout the country. I'm just envisioning, I don't know, 10 people walking around with these goggles on and trying not to bounce into the walls because they think they're walking down hallways and things. Um, all right. This was a chance for people to really discover how simulation can truly impact not just veteran care, but the future of VA healthcare in terms of facility design, veteran experience, and much more, said David Harrison, Project Manager ACO. We're happy to be here to provide the connections and tools to make this a reality, not just a virtual reality, right? Uh, all participants reported that uh, the conference instilled the value of simulation-based training for bettering veteran health outcomes. So that's, that's really good. They will bring these experiences back with them to VA facilities across the country, spreading the impact of healthcare simulation through ACO. They will have the standardization practices and know-how to grow and support simulation education opportunities at their locations, providing standardization of best practices for improved veteran outcomes, opportunities for innovation and networking of resources. That's, that's the end of it. I'll put the whole thing, if it, if it all fits, in the uh, comment section below. I think it's great. Um, I mean, they should be they should be utilizing technology to the fullest when it comes to building out um, facilities or types of care, um, layouts, all of that stuff. And uh, the virtual reality uh, gives that ability to do without actually building out a actual facility and then and then learning from there. So uh, hopefully this will cut down on errors and also better the experience, like it said. Uh, for the veteran and the caregiver. So with that, we'll go ahead and end it. Thanks again so much for watching. I really appreciate you. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.